Hi, I'm Kim Tasso and today we're going to be looking at a way to improve your writing and your presentations, um, the idea of the power of three in storytelling. Um, but let's start thinking uh, first about the psychology around the power of three. Um, there are some psychological reasons why three is so important to us. Uh, many years back, uh, George Miller argued that uh, most humans coped best with their short-term memory with between uh, seven to nine plus or minus two chunks of information. But uh, contemporary uh, psychologists have discovered um, that it's most easiest for us to recall information in short-term memory when it's in chunks of three or four. Um, and humans uh, seek patterns in things always and uh, three is obviously enough to make a pattern so it's kind of brief and and uh, got some rhythm in there. Um, our ability to make decisions is also bounded by three. We like a choice as human beings but but not too much choice so three is a good number. Um, three is also vital for our physical survival as well. For example yeah we will die after three minutes without air three hours um, in a harsh environment, three days without water, three weeks without food, that three. Um, there's a Latin saying which is omne trium perfectum, which means that everything that comes in three is perfect or every set of three is perfect. So, oh my god, it's interesting isn't it how many sayings that we use come in the power of three, how many can you think of? Um, the power of three is all around us. So when we go to school, we learn the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Um, primary colours are red, yellow, and blue. And we have uh, sports where the winners are gold, silver, and bronze. We use relative temperature measures of cold, warm, and hot, and traffic lights use red, amber, and green. Um, we also know um, that economists and people doing forecasting need three points to make a trend. And of course, we all enjoy a three course meal. Um, politicians, especially this year, uh, use three in their motto. And we've all heard this year, loads and loads, hands, face, space. Um, architects and engineers know that triangles three points, are the most stable shapes and many bridges are built on that basis. Um, and photographers use the rule of thirds to make great images. And while we're on art, one of my favourite sculptures is here, the Three Graces. Um, this links to the uh, Greek uh, uh, mythology of the Three Graces, goddesses of things such as charm, beauty and creativity, kind of like the muses. Um, in, in theological areas, we have another famous uh, triad, uh, faith, hope and charity. So I'll put those down there. Um, philosophy also uses three. Uh, Socrates in his uh, work The Peaceful Warrior uh, said that life had three rules. There's paradox, um, life is a mystery, don't waste time trying to figure it out. Humour, have a sense of humour, particularly about yourself, and change, uh, know that nothing ever stays the same. How true is that this year? Um, and while we're on philosophy, the ancient Chinese had the concept of the three wise monkeys. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, and that's pretty good advice still today. So let's think about uh, the power of three in, in writing stories and presentations. Uh, I remember one of my most uh, taglines, of a brand taglines I was most proud of back in uh, 1998 was uh, real people, real solutions real estate. Um, but there are lots of stories and fairy tales have three elements. So I can think of the three musketeers, although there were four, um, three blind mice, Goldilocks and the three bears, and the three little pigs. And it's interesting, the first little pig made his house of straw, got blown down by the wolf. The second little pig made his house out of sticks, got blown down by the wolf, create a sense of anticipation. Third little pig made his house of bricks, the moral of the story. Um, in many stories, the characters are described with three words and often they have to endure three trials. Think about Rumpelstiltskin, for example. Three th makes things memorable and persuasive. At school, we learn a three-stage structure for writing. We always go with a beginning and a middle 
and an end. But that doesn't really work too well in a persuasive business communication. So we have to be a bit more creative with our structures. Um, and there's some guidance on that in another uh, blog I've provided and another video, which you can have a look at. Um, in grammar, there are three perspectives, uh, first, second and third. So the first person, I, me, we, us, and there's another famous triad here, me, myself, I. Um, second person is you, yours, uh, yourself, yourselves. And then the third person, which is he, him, his, himself, uh, their, them. Um, we know in persuasive communications, the use of the second uh, person is, is really uh, important uh, because obviously we talk just about us, it's kind of inward looking. So we need to connect with the second person, with the, with the reader. And also in writing, there's past, present and future uh, tenses. Um, and being the most persuasive being when we're writing in the active present tense. And now when we come to storytelling, um, Aristotle always argued that there were three elements to be included in all writing and speeches. He started off with ethos, which is, you know, conveying your credibility, uh, logos, which is the rational and logical argument, and pathos, which is the emotional uh, persuasive element. And from all the work that's been done on stakeholder management, stakeholder engagement and buy-in, we know that making a rational argument is never enough. There has to be some sort of emotional connection to get real uh, traction. And most of the things I write about in all the books covers this difference between having both rational and emotional elements for decision making and persuasion and so on. Um, in many of my posts on persuasions and, and, and pitches and presentations, I talk about having three key messages um, with supporting evidence and stories to make a big impact. Um, earlier on this year, I made a little video introducing myself using the power of three throughout, so you could have a look at that. Um, but just to finish off really, um, and I'm sure, uh, this time of year my, my, my Jewish, Muslim, Hindu and Sikh friends won't mind um, as in religion there's a lot of uh, threes so for example Christianity is based on the Holy Trinity of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost and the story of Christmas uh, wouldn't be complete uh, without the three kings or the three wise men. So I'd like to wish you peace, happiness and prosperity, another three, for the new year. We're just a hop, skip and a jump away from 2021 and let's hope it's a better year than 2020. Thank you so much for watching and listening.